guys. So, <laughs> in the daily news in the knife community, uh, Cold Steel is suing CRKT Knives, Columbia River Knife and Tool. Uh, reason being is because Cold Steel says that they are falsely advertising their LOX system, L-A-W-K-S, uh, in saying that it is like a virtual fixed blade. Um, so, <laughs> that's the news, and now I'm going to talk about it and give my opinions. Now, I give very unbiased opinions in situations like this. This reminds me of back in the day when uh, Spyderco sued Benchmade for using their patented spider hole. Uh, I believe it was on the Vex, the Benchmade Vex. That was back when Benchmade had uh, the Red Class, which was their international stuff, uh, like the Monochrome, which was an awesome knife. I miss, I miss that knife. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, the Benchmade Vex came out. If memory serves me correct, that was the first Benchmade knife. Uh, that use the spider hole, okay, the hole in the blade to open it. And Spyderco said, whoa, Benchmade, what the hell, man? Uh, that's our thing. You can't use that. And they sued him. They took him to court, and they lost. And the court basically said, you can't patent a circle. You don't own the circle. Anyone can use a circle, um, which, you know, obviously a lot of people were disappointed in that, that result. But uh, Benchmade is also a huge company, way bigger financially than Spyderco. But that was, uh, you know, the first thing that popped in my head. I remember that. And I remember other feuds, too. There's there's a lot of political stuff going on, or has been going on for, for decades in the uh, the knife communities and, and companies and the whole business in general. Um, there's a lot of dirty stuff that happens behind the scenes you guys don't see. I mean, some people are privy to it, but uh, I, I try not to make too many videos talking about that kind of stuff because, to be honest, it's bad publicity for knives. You know what I mean? It's like when some kid gets shot with a gun. It's just bad publicity for, for guns all over. You know, when you're talking about people bickering back and forth and, and the business aspect of knives, it takes away from the enjoyment of the hobby. People who just like buying knives because they're cool. People who just buy knives because they're useful. Um, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, it also splits the fences here, too. Uh, splits the fences? That doesn't mean anything, does it? <laughs> the fence is the split. I'm making shit up, man. Anyway, uh, it, it splits the I don't know what, what saying I meant to use there, but, you know, it draws a line in the sand. How about that? I can use that saying. Draws a line in the sand. So what happens is people just basically pick a side. There's people right now so, uh, siding with CRKT, and they're saying, hey, you know, Cold Steel, man, this is petty. This is BS. What are you doing? And then people on the Cold Steel side saying, yeah, man, CRKT, you suck. What are you doing? Why are you lying? You know, why are you uh, falsely advertising and, and saying your knives are, are awesome when they're not? You know, so people people are basically picking sides. And here's my opinion on things. There's, there's a bunch to talk about. I'm not going to get too deep into the subject, but I definitely want to touch upon a couple things. First of all, thank you to all the people making videos on this. Um, you know, spreading information is good. Knowledge is power. And it's just good to know sometimes what's going on in the community. But at the same time, you know, when you get into the political side of things, it discourages you from uh, trying cool products. All right, that's happened to so many people. Um, when you find out, like for example, I don't know, let's say there's a makeup company, and there's a big news story on CNN how they, you know, put makeup on dogs and the dogs are dying because of it. Blah blah blah. They're testing on animals, right? Big thing. A lot of people used to talk about. I guess people still talk about. It. I don't know. I'm not into makeup. Um, and so, like, some woman watches that news story and they say, "Oh, Revlon. They test on dogs. I'm not going to buy Revlon anymore." It's bad publicity. Okay, now that woman might have really enjoyed using Revlon makeup, but now that she knows that they test on animals, she'll never try it. She'll never use it. So just like this, if you if you hear this story, there's people out there who are going to say, man, Cold Steel, what a petty thing. You know what? I'm not going to buy Cold Steel knives. I'm boycotting them. Screw that. Well, hey, you know what? You're missing out on some cool products. So when you get into political side of things, anything, you're missing out on enjoying the, pro the products. And I've said this many times in the past because there's been a lot of situations where a company will say something or do something bad, and because of their political stance, people boycott that company and they miss out on their products. Uh, Chick-fil-A <laughs> is one great example. I've only, only eaten at Chick-fil-A once. Freaking delicious. Awesome. So many people out there boycott them, obviously, for obvious reasons, but I'm not going to get into that. So... Um, that's the case here, and which is discouraging to me because, you know, I want everyone to enjoy all kinds of knives, of course, as a knife lover. But anyway, I love Cold Steel, and I love CRKT. And no matter what happens here, it doesn't matter to me. I'm still going to buy and use both those companies' knives because they're awesome. Uh, generally speaking, and it's hard because both companies have knives I like and knives I don't like. 
Every knife company is like that for me. Um, Cold Steel makes some some junky products, but they make some really great products too. Same thing with CRKT. Okay, uh, but generally speaking, here uh, ten out of ten times a Cold Steel knife will be more hard use than a CRKT. Now, most of us, if if you're really into knives, you've seen all the proof DVDs and all that kind of stuff where Cold Steel is testing and and going crazy with their knives, showing how awesome they are and how strong they are. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, I think they're basing their their uh, idea here on how crappy the lock system is, and they're upset that they're advertising it to be a virtual fixed blade. And that's very important. They use the words virtual fixed blade. That's this whole case here is going to be defining words and terminologies and expectations from those terminologies, uh, which is a very gray area. But basically, you know, they're doing these tests and they're locking the blade in a vise and hanging weight off 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, whatever. And their knives are hanging in there, and then they put up a you know CRKT knife for a variable to test other brands, and it breaks at like 40 pounds or something. They go, you know what? They're saying this is a virtual fixed blade. That's BS, and you know we don't like that, so we're going to sue them and make sure they can't say that anymore. Um, here's the problem I have with that: hanging 100 pounds, uh, hanging five pounds in that situation on the handle. Uh, that's not normal use, you know. That's not an expectation I would have personally, and I am very much into knives. If someone tells me this is a virtual fixed blade, uh, I don't think in my mind, well, it better I better be able to stab it into the wall and hang on it. That's not how I use my knives, nor do I feel like that's an important thing uh, that a knife should possess. You know what I mean? Um, should it be strong? To, to use the term virtual fixed blade, yeah, I expect it to be strong. Um, I've used many models with the lock system from CRKT. I've never had one fail. I've never had a cold steel knife fail either. Under normal use, and that's where I don't know if the you know this whole suit, if they're gonna be focusing on that and determining, you know, what it means to be a virtual fixed blade. Because that's the first thing you have to do is you have to define what does that mean to be a virtual fixed blade? You know, it, it's it's a real gray area. Does that mean that if you have a fixed blade and then of course there's tons of different fixed blades that are designed differently. You know, when you and I think fixed blade, we're thinking full tang fixed blade. But that's not really a definition of a fixed blade. Fixed blade doesn't mean a solid piece of steel. No, it doesn't. A fixed blade means a knife that doesn't fold. So, technically, there's Chinese fixed blades, defined as a fixed blade, that are total junk. And if you stab it into a wall or, or hang it in a vise and you hang off five pounds, it'll snap like a twig. That's a fixed blade, though. That is a uh, the legal term of a fixed blade, right? Or the definition of a fixed blade, whatever. So that's really weird. What fixed blade? What kind of fixed blade are you talking about? It's very loose terminology. You know, CRKT, to say something's a virtual fixed blade, what does that really mean? They're, they're alluding to the fact that it's strong. But defining that, that's going to be difficult in my opinion. And let's say you do define fixed blade. Let's say they say specifically, okay, well, fixed blade defined as a knife that should be able to hold 50 pounds hanging off the back of it, whatever. Let's say that BS passes, and then they say, okay, well, then I'm going to compare it to this knife, and if it doesn't pass that, it can't be called a virtual fixed blade. Well, again, with the variety of knives out there, how do you pick which one is the fixed blade or how strong a knife should be to be considered a virtual fixed blade? You know what I mean? And then some, I just read a comment from someone, very smart. There's lots of companies out there that claim to be the sharpest knives in the world, including Cold Steel. Um, clearly that's not something you can prove. There are many, many variations on how sharp a knife is, you know. Who can say they really have the sharpest knives in the world? Sharpest under what standards? Sharpest for cutting ham? Or sharpest for, you know, cutting through leather? Sharpest for processing wood? You know what I mean? These, these terms, to define that, it's going to be very, very difficult. Um... I don't know, man. It, it's I don't really care either way what happens. I just hurt. I hope it doesn't hurt either company, and and that, I I really mean that. I hope I hope that CRKT is not hurt by this lawsuit. I hope that Colt Steel is not hurt by this because I want them both to flourish and be huge successful companies and continue to get bigger and grow and and make more cool knives that we can buy and use and and test out and, and try and enjoy, you know. But there's a lot of issues here. The one thing that I commented on, you know, Cold Steel's, uh, not on their page, but I, I commented in, I think it was um, Matthew Culberson's uh, uh, page, 
which is Hisasu 5's uh, brother. Uh, I'm sorry if I, I, I got your last name wrong, but um, both those guys talking about uh, this lawsuit. And both, by the way, awesome channels. I'm going to link uh, you guys to both those channels. Definitely check them out. If you like knives, you got to see what they're doing. Um, just really awesome brothers and, and very much into knives. Very cool channels. But anyway, um, they're talking about this. And I commented on one of the videos and I said, well, you know, if Cold Steel is going to talk about, you know, words and wording, you know, that's, that's skating on thin ice because their paradox, if you don't know, the paradox looks like a battle song, okay? Now, it's not advertised as a battle song, but if you see a picture of that knife and specifications, you know, on a website, there's a lot of people I know who buy that knife thinking that they're going to get it home and flip it around, and they realize, man, this thing doesn't flip. This is not a battle song. It's not. It's a battle song or butterfly knife design, but it is not flippable. That's the whole purpose of that one is to make a legal battle song that you can have anywhere and that you can't flip it. You need two hands to open it. Now... If you look under the description there, it specifically says, and this is Cold Steel's website, okay? You can go check this out for yourself uh, under the Paradox page. It says that, I'm, I'm not going to paraphrase here, but, uh, well, I am going to paraphrase, sorry. I'm not going to give the exact words. You can read it for yourself. But basically what they're saying is that it's a felony to possess a ballast song in California, and that is false, okay? So they, they have false information on their website. Now, you can consider that to be false advertisement. So, you know, like I said, when you start scrutinizing and, and reading the fine print everywhere and start asking questions, you know, they're just as guilty, in my opinion, uh, as, as CRKT. And I don't want to say CRKT is guilty of anything. They're making a claim. It's a loose claim. You know, if you watch something, every infomercial makes a loose claim. Every single infomercial for every single product, you know... It's never as good as they say it is. Sometimes it works. It works okay. Uh, but, you know, the sharpest knife in the world. Can't prove that. You know, that's that's a false advertisement, in my opinion, uh, based on nothing, based on your opinion. Okay, so CRKT selling these knives with the lock system in it, uh, saying that it's a virtual fixed blade, that's their opinion. Aren't they entitled to that opinion? As a consumer, isn't it your job to, you know, differentiate between that, do a little bit of homework? And obviously, you know, there's a, I forget what it's called. Uh, there's some law, and it's it's basically about false advertisement for companies. You can't say this because it's, it, you're lying to a consumer for them to buy your product, and they buy your product, and it, it doesn't perform as expected. Like I said, that's most things you see on infomercials, um, you know, or just in your stores. A lot of things are falsely advertised. But anyway, I'm not arguing that. You shouldn't falsely advertise something. But in my opinion, uh, the CRKT lock system, being a virtual fixed blade, uh, I've never had one fail. I, I'm the, it's not the strongest knife. We, we all know that. Uh, no, excuse me, not the strongest knife lock design, specifically. Um, but it's a hell of a lot stronger than a lot of regular liner locks. You can't argue that either. You know, most liner locks are, are, are okay. They're, they're not. Inherently, people happen to think that liner locks suck and that they're going to fail on you. I, they don't. I, I don't know what you guys are doing with your knives, but I don't really have any issues with liner locks. Um, and then to put an additional piece in there to make sure that it doesn't fail. Virtual fixed blade, I don't really know, but I have no problem with them saying that. I don't think that's falsely advertising that product. That is, of course, one man's opinion, but that is also based upon a lot of use on those knives. It's a based upon experience. Not, I'm not guessing whether it's strong or not. I'm telling you it's strong enough for all the tasks I've ever needed for, and I've used it for multiple different cutting tasks, all normal cutting tasks. Never took a CRKT and hung 200 pounds off the handle while the blade was locked into a vise. Um, but I, I don't plan to, and most people don't plan to. So what I feel should happen is I feel that Cold Steel should legally be able to advertise their knives as being stronger than the lock system. You know what I mean? Like, that's fine with me, because that's a true statement. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think that's, um, like, a lot of people might say, well, you know, you shouldn't be specifically naming other companies and putting them down because then that, that can get to a whole different issue as far as uh, lawsuits and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you have something that's factual, that's fine. Their knives are strong, and they can advertise knives. Hey, our knives are stronger than most. You know, you can say that. But when you start getting into nitpicking on, on words and stuff, it's a very tricky situation because, like I said, uh, I think they're just as guilty – I think a lot of knife companies are, are guilty in in that sense. If you want to consider that falsely advertising, it happens all the time. 
So why are you picking this one specific thing, you know, to complain about? Um, but at the same time, I'm not dumb, and neither are you. I don't think this lawsuit is so much about, you know, getting rid of a false claim because they're really concerned about knife consumers. It's just more great advertisement. That's what it is. Because guess what? We're all talking about it. Everyone's talking about cold steel knives all of a sudden. All of a sudden, there's a boost in sales. You know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> you got to sometimes uh, open your eyes a little bit wider and, and see things for what they really are. Um, even if they lose a the lawsuit, they're going to sell more knives because of it. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, I love cold steel. And uh, I like Lynn Thompson. Good guy. Uh, met him, you know, in person. Had a nice little conversation. He's passionate about knives. Uh, he's a good businessman, and he's a good, uh, uh, very good at marketing, as we all know. And I love CRKT, and I love all the guys that work over there. Awesome guys, and I love products from both companies. And uh, like I said, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, I really, truly hope that neither one is hurt by this because I'd love to see them grow and make more knives for us to get. So. Anyway, just wanted to inform you on what's going on as well as give my personal opinion. Uh, doesn't mean I'm right. just happens to be my opinion. I could be completely off on this one, but that's just how I, I feel the situation is. And um, personally, uh, I, I hope they don't win the lawsuit. I hope that uh, it's too hard to really define those things, and, and I hope it, it, you know, it just kind of goes away. Uh, same as I, I hope that the uh, the Benchmade thing went away because even though Spider Co is known for having their their spider hole uh, to try to say other people can't use it, I didn't like that. I wanted to see as many cool knife features as possible from as many different companies out there as possible. You know, um, we all have pocket clips for the most part. You know, should there be a monopoly, one person can only use pocket clips. You know what I mean? So. When, when different things happen and then people say, oh, you're copying this person and that sucks, you shouldn't do that. And counterfeiting is one thing. I'm against counterfeiting, but copying a knife design, I'm all for it. Just you better give credit to who came up with that idea. You know what I mean? Uh, but I'm all for that because I want to see lots of different knives have lots of cool knife features. I don't want one person to only have that. But I understand at the same time that in a business perspective, you have to have a niche. In order for your knife company to be good, you have to do something that's different. And all of a sudden, if someone else is doing that, uh, you know, it hurts your business. So I get that too. It's really hard to, to uh, you know, see it from both angles. But, you know, in this case, Cold Seal is known for making very good, strong knives. And when they have another company saying that our knives are virtual fixed blades, it's competition. It may take sales away from you. I think that's something else that might have to happen is Cold Seal might have to prove that their claim is hurting their business. You know, Cold Steel has to say, they're saying their knives are virtual fixed blades, so people are buying their knives instead of ours, and that's wrong because our knives are stronger than their knives and, and so forth and, you know, whatever. Uh, it'll be interesting. I'll follow this and, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get some information in the future and give you guys an update, see what happens. But for now, you know, whatever. Just more drama. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Please uh, post your, your uh, thoughts on this in the comments. Uh, I don't care which company you like more. Uh, people are going to be smack talking, I know it, but that's okay. Makes things interesting, and we're all allowed to have an opinion, right? Look forward to reading the comments on this one. So, that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.